Hello everyone, my name is Caitly. I'm a P2 student at UConn School of Pharmacy. Hi, my name is Caitlin. I'm also a P2 at the UConn School of Pharmacy, and we are both members of the UConn APHA chapter. Today we'll be talking about benzodiazepines, uh, misuse and misuse. So what are benzodiazepines usually prescribed for? So there's many different functions. They're mostly prescribed for anxiety and panic disorders, seizures, insomnia or sleep disorders, agitation, alcohol withdrawal, sedative hypnotic withdrawal, a preoperative sedation, or muscle relaxant. So these are some of the most commonly prescribed benzodiazepines. Um, these are also the most readily abused. You've heard of Xanax, or Alprazolam, Clonopin, or Clonazepam, Valium, or Diazepam, um, Ativan, Lorazepam, and there are many other ones. So how do they work? So benzodiazepines work on the GABA um, neurons in the brain. GABA is an excitatory neuron. Um, the benzodiazepines bind to the GABA receptors in the brain um, and they reduce the excitability of the neurons, which produce a calming, calming effect. So you can see in the diagram, this is the GABA receptor, they go in and they bind um, and it decreases the excited, excitability of the neurons. There are many side effects. There are short-term and long-term side effects. For short-term, it's considered to be safe, but it still has side effects, including aggression, dizziness, drowsiness, sexual dysfunction, depression, or blurred vision. You'll see commonly um, labels on the bottles that say you shouldn't operate heavy machinery or drive before you know how these um, medications affect you. For a long, long term use, it can carry some negative effects mentally and psychologically, including cognitive problems, sleep disturbances, mental disorders, addiction, cancer, um, or immune system suppression. So here is a diagram explaining how prescription drugs are abused. So they normally don't carry a risk as high of a risk when they're taken as prescribed. So if they're prescribed once a day, you should be following that regimen. If you start doubling up on the doses or combining it with other medications or skipping a day and then taking two the next day, that's when you can start um, you know, have the more potential for abuse. So recreational abuse is one you don't have a prescription for the benzodiazepine. Uh, you can get the drugs when you get the drugs when and where uh, you can. You usually use them for euphoric or relaxation purposes. And they can be taken to boost or ease the drug using experience. So, an example of this is um, in combination with alcohol. Um, this is a common label you might see on prescriptions may cause drowsiness. Um, use care when operating a car or dangerous machinery. It since it has a sedating effect, um, alcohol also has a sedating effect. So they can build on top of each other and increase the sedation, which can cause intoxic intoxication, aggression, and memory loss. And alcohol is also more readily used than other drugs. Um, it's most readily available available and um, is easiest to obtain than illicit drugs. Uh, there's also a lot of uh, abuse with benzodiazepines in combination with opioids. 
So 16% of overdose deaths involving opioids also involve benzodiazepines. When you mix the two central nervous system depressants, you can overdose on one or both. And both these med medications reduce mental capacity and increase potential for unpredictable effects. You are also at an increased risk of de developing a substance abuse disorder or mental health disorder. So some abuse statistics. One in eight people in the US have used benzodiazepines in the past year, or 12.6%. Um, misuse of the prescription drugs accounted for more than 70% of overall use. Misuse was highest among young adults from ages 18 to 25. Most people who are abusing benzodiazepines have been prescribed these medications for therapeutic reasons, so people can get addicted to these medications, even if they're not intentionally trying to. In about 82% of benzo-related treatment admissions, another drug is the primary substance of abuse. Um, they're usually secondary to opioids, alcohol, and marijuana. So now we're gonna talk about the demographics of misuse. About 30.6 million adults reported benzodiazepine use annually. And like Caitlin said before, adults ages 18 to 25 has the highest misuse, and adults 50 to 64 had the highest prescribed use. So misuse without a prescription was the most common type of misuse, and unfortunately a friend or a relative was the most common source. And on the right, there's a graph showing that more likely white females are um, the ones primarily misusing these medications. So abuse in combination with other drugs other than alcohol that Kately discussed, most benzodiazepines are actually abused with opioids. And the National Institute for Drug Abuse found that 15% of heroin users also use benzodiazepines daily for more than one year. And 73% use benzos more often than weekly. So some studies show that between 5 and 90% of methadone users are also regular users of benzodiazepines, which I realize is quite a span. So even between 3 to 41% of alcoholics have reported that they've also abused benzodiazepines at some time. Often it's used to treat withdrawal effects and intoxication, but then they can abuse and misuse it after they're done for the medical use that they're using. So benzodiazepines do appeal to poly drug addicts. These prescriptions do have a pretty high street value. It does encourage people to reroute to illicit sources. And I know even pharmacists um, who don't want to fill prescriptions for certain people will just say, no, you can't fill these prescriptions. And then a person will seek other street drugs, which they can potentially overdose on. Um, so benzodiazepines have multiple uses for poly drug addicts. It can enhance the euphoria and effects of opioids. It can alleviate withdrawal or abstinence syndromes. It can temper cocaine highs, kind of bring you back down. And it can augment alcohol synergistically and to modulate withdrawal states as well. So we have to ask, how does dependence occur? So the brain can become physically or chemically dependent on the drug, especially if used long-term, which is not recommended. Who's at higher risk? People with a family history of substance abuse or drug dependency can contribute to the likelihood that a person will become dependent on the drug. And what is tolerance? If a person is on a certain dose of medication for a period of time, they can become used to that specific dose and seek a higher dose, which puts them at a risk for increased side effects. Withdrawal from lawfully prescribed doses. This is when your doctor prescribes taking one at night so you can go to sleep or some, something like that. So they are not actually meant to be taken for a long period of time. 
And the longer they've been taking that drug, the longer lasting the side effects a person will have when they try to stop it. So it's strongly recommended that people on benzodiazepines do not stop taking them cold turkey because they can have some adverse side effects. So a person shouldn't just stop, they need to speak with their prescriber or pharmacist for advice before they adjust their dose. And this is just a diagram of some symptoms that can occur from withdrawal or from stopping cold turkey. Um, you can have seizures, nausea, abnormal body sensations like brain zaps, aches and pains, muscle spasms, anxiety can be exacerbated or panic attacks and depression as well. So this is the timeline of withdrawal symptoms. The general symptoms last about one to four days and it peaks in the acute phase around week two and then it finally begins to subside. Those symptoms can last a few days up to several months or even years if not addressed professionally. So how can a pharmacist help? A pharmacist is actually the most accessible healthcare professional to address any medication concerns. Think about it. You can just walk into your retail pharmacy and go to the counseling counter and ask your pharmacist for a recommendation. We can also collaborate with your prescriber to make sure that medications are all safe to use in combination with each other. And please, if you're concerned for yourself or someone else and feel that they might be addicted to benzodiazepines, a pharmacist can provide information and resources to help guide you on the next steps. And here are some useful resources that we have, um, drughelpline.org, samsa.gov, or you can reach out to a friend or relative or pharmacist if necessary. And that is our last slide. I hope you enjoyed viewing this presentation.